Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to the Future History Project. And this week, uh, we have finished reading the trilogy, uh, iRobot Trilogy, by Mickey Zucker Reichart. And for those that have read this, I thank you, <laughs> because um, I can understand it wasn't an easy thing to do because there are many faults uh, with this series, I think. And uh, this one, though, uh, was published in 2016. Unlike I'd sort of slightly predicted, I was thinking that maybe it was late enough for her to get some Trump stuff in there because she seems to be interposing things throughout uh, the stories that are her own prejudices possibly or bugaboos um or her interest because i think the because she is a physician and uh or she's a uh let me see she's practicing medicine um um i think she is uh doing psychiatry so hence they or she uh if if it's not they uh we're still sort of unsure whether or not this was something that came down from the Asimov estate to say make her a psychiatric nurse first, or a doctor, sorry, uh, and then move her into robotics. Um, the book is a bit shorter than the other, what, 50, 50 pages shorter, which, which was nice in many ways. Uh, I, I did again like, because I, I, I don't remember it in the first volume, as I say, uh, but I remembered it in the second one. She talks about the smells of the hospital and that. And this book starts out, uh, and it starts out September 1st, 2037. So it's, again, a year on from the previous uh, uh, incidents uh, of the... Uh, uh, I always forget their name. Uh, the... Uh, Society uh, for Humanity had murdered her father, who turned out to be a robot, which was pretty glaringly clear, I thought, right from the, the, the first book. I thought it was going to be the reveal in the first book, but it happened to, it happens in the second one. And um, as the, the last volume, the second volume, uh, To Obey, ended she was sort of crawling back and apologizing to get back into her medical studies at the hospital and we find out that she spent a whole year sort of catching up because she was behind and working uh double triple shifts to to get caught up and as i say it starts out she's in the hospital um and she's talking about the smells the color of the walls and things like that and there's a cold blue that's happening. Um, and actually, at the same time, a cold uh, cold silver. Cold blue uh, is a an emergency in the hospital. Uh, cardiac sort of type emergency. And cold silver means that there's uh, potentially uh, um, somebody who is dangerous to staff and the patients, possibly, or themselves. And um, and security would be called, and she knows that this is this is happening in one of the labs. Like in in the first book, she helped with the nano robots uh, for a team of Goldman and Peters, um, and uh, this this happens to be in one of their offices. So she runs there like a a lot of uh, doctors are, but they're all sort of standing around outside because then she sort of realized what happened to Code Sil Silver. But what happened is Goldman uh, had been um, attacked, back of his head smashed in, and but she rushes in there even though knowing that there's potentially danger for, you know, uh, doctors to help because she doesn't know what the situation and the others are sort of standing back. But she goes in, and there's a doctor trying to, uh, you know, keep him alive, resuscitate him. But it's pretty clear that the back of his head is gone. And the security have someone, she notices very tall, 
uh, face against the wall, just not saying anything, not doing anything. And they, they, they can't save Dr. Goldman. And then she realizes the, the uh, uh, security has Nate, the resident robot. And, uh, you know, she finds out that um, the, the murder weapon was... Uh, let me see if I, if I can find it here. And it's just... It's a bit of, to me, almost comical. Um, uh, it, it was it was like a utility hammer of some sort. Um, well, I'm, obviously, I'm not going to find it. It's um, uh, always when you're looking for something at, at at the moment, you'll you'll never find it. Uh, but there's a long description of the type of hammer. It's like a sentence long. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just a little over the top to begin with, but okay. But she finds, so they arrest him and she knows, well, he's a robot because the three laws of robotics, it's impossible for him to kill anybody, but it's clear that he's traumatized, you know, uh, because, uh, he's like, it was almost comatose that she saw, well, uh, they were taking him out and didn't say anything. And so she goes to her her uh, sort of boss at that time and says that she wants basically some time off to help Nate. And they're refusing, so she's saying, no, well, she's going to do it. And they said, well, if you walk out, you walk out, you're, you're done with, you're fired. So she said, fine. She walks out, goes to the police station and sees a detective. And this... This is like where uh, Reichardt just is abominable for, for names uh, for people. She, she meets Detective DeAndre Riviera the Third. Yeah, right. Um, so she wants to see uh, Nate, but they're saying no, he's not. You know, they need to ask questions. She explains that he's a robot. Uh, they don't sort of believe her so she calls up uh lawrence robertson uh, head of uh u.s robots and mechanical men who then comes down and they try to talk to nate and nate is like basically comatose but he is sort of he does take commands like stand up and stuff like this and they asked what happened and you know there was no one else in the room and he said well presumably i i killed him you know um like the evidence is because no one else he's he is holding the murder weapon that was dripping bl with blood and so he must be the murderer like he's sort of saying but lawrence says uh lawrence robertson says well it's impossible you know it's this and i'm the head of the u.s robots uh and everything uh and i take full responsibility so they arrest him you know, because Nate is sort of a, a tool and evidence. So they want, so he has to deactivate Nate. So he deactivates Nate. Um, and they sort of keep him in uh, storage and they're going to move him eventually. But Susan's quite distraught with this. So she goes to U.S. Robotics, speaks to Arthur Lamming, who tells her about, she wants to know basically how long before Nate's, positronic brain will shut down without power and he explains well there's two batteries um one in the navel uh for the body and there's one for the brain which he has a detachable penis <laughs> that it's hidden underneath the detachable penis really okay fine and so he he's re basically run on watch batteries and it's a small battery that that goes into his navel, so so he's running watch batteries. That's what he is, but it's nuclear power. So she's bringing the battery to him, but she steals another battery, and then she con connives to um, uh, steal um, Nate. Uh, they're going to move him in an ambulance, and so she puts the uh, the battery in, and. She she absconds with him, and they're walking through the park, Central Park. Uh, and she's already you know recontacted. She she's been sort of uh, not in contact with her friend uh, Kendrell and um, the 
uh, Jake, the cop that helped her in the previous one for a whole year, but now she's getting back in touch because she needs their help because she's got to somehow, uh, you know, um, exonerate Nate and free uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Lawrence Robertson. So they're walking through the park and all of a sudden they get attacked. Uh, you know, there, there's men there and somebody out of the blue, yeah, out of the blue, pops up and shoots three of them. And he, you know, they, they, they drive away on, you know, they, they escape on a, a motorcycle. So it turns out this guy here, we go with names again. His name is Pal Bonafi or so Bonafi or something like that. Pal, P-A-L, not Paul, Pal. And it's short for, um, uh, oh, uh, I, I hate when I can't think of these things. Um, Paladin. So, <laughs> and it's just really, you know, so, you know, it, it's, it's a combination of things. Paladin Knights of Charlemagne, uh, you know, so he's a knight in shining armor with his faithful steed, which is a Harley and a sidecar. Because all three can't get in, so uh, convenient. So right there, you're sort of thinking that's funny, but also, too, Paladin is sort of the character in the old radio series and TV series, Have Gun Will Travel. So, you know, he just happens to be there, uh, you know, with this. And, you know, right away you're thinking, okay, well, that's a, that's a bit convenient, but okay, suspend belief, suspend belief, you know. So, um, you know, they, they go back to her little flat. She's got a really tiny flat, and uh, Nate is there too, and he, he's a little better uh, once he's woken up. He, he's more communicative. Uh, and everything, and uh, they're just sort of getting into things and trying to find out a, a, more what's happening. And Jake, the detective, comes to the door. She doesn't want to let him in because, you know, she's absconded with police evidence. Uh, you know, a.k.a. Nate. Uh, so she she's doing this, but Pal, Paladin is hearing this in the background and goes out and says, you know, oh, that, you know, they, they could cock this story that the reason, you know, that, that he's her boyfriend and, and, you know, asks him sort of in and, you know, he's met Nate before and, but Nate is sitting at a table, you know, his head down uh, and they've swapped clothes while, you know, uh, she's talking out there. Uh, in the hallway, and and he doesn't recognize Nat, and she says, "Oh, it's it's a cousin from Iowa, <laughs> you know, uh, cousin, you know, Landrin or whatever." Again, it's a, a, a made up, just totally fake name, you know, uh, that that is a cousin, a Cam Landrin Campbell. That's come to see, and she doesn't want him upset because he's, you know, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's sensitive and he, he he's backward because he's from Iowa. So, you know, and they sort of, you know, they, they do talk about a little bit what happened in the park. And he's saying, well, you need to, and he's investigating his new investigation because he's been transferred is he's investigating uh, the theft of Nate. Um. Uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't recognize him, you know, and I just, it, it's like too much for a suspension of disbelief. So they go down to his office and she tells him the story of what happened. And then, um, you know, the, you know, he comes in, then Pal Paladin comes in and says, you know, he's done this. He's, he's, you know, he's got a license. He's former military, you know. And all this kind of stuff, and she, you know, they could they could cock this huge story because he takes him because he's saying, well, you know, there's a problem here because you didn't, uh, uh, you know, report the shootings and stuff, but he did on his Fox, his phone, on his wrist, uh, his, his watch phone uh, that's connected to the internet and everything, smartphone basically. So they, he takes them both to the park police or whatever, or is it the Port Authority? I can't remember which, but 
Uh, and, you know, he's concerned that they'll take his weapon, you know, because it's concealed weapon. Uh, but everything's okay. And then this is another interpolation that I see somehow with this thing because it, it's just, it's like, I don't know what, why she's doing this. Like, she talks about, you know, because it seems like, you know, he's perfectly fine for citizens to walk around with concealed weapons and, you know, and and do this kind of thing. So she does this thing of saying, oh, well, there was a clap down at some point with, uh, you know, weapons and stuff. But all, all only the criminals had weapons and they were causing havoc against uh, citizenry. So, you know, that had to stop in the 2020. So then, you know, citizens can be armed. So the, the, the purpose is that that if, if, you know, the criminals won't do anything if, because they don't know who in the public has, has a gun. And it's this age-old stupidity that that I call it stupidity because it's like as if that's going to stop them. And if that stops criminals, then why doesn't the death penalty, uh, you know, as a deterrent, stop people from from committing you know heinous crimes to get the penalty? It doesn't, <laughs> you know. So it's not a deterrent. And the other thing is, it's like you know, you got criminals with guns, and you got police with guns. And then you've got a citizenry who think they're all ramble, uh, you know, but in fact, they're Fibber McGee, basically. Look them up, if you don't know. <laughs> um, a radio uh, character on, on a weird comedy series in the 50s, 40s and 50s. Uh, but anyway, and it's just, you know, she, she gets into these things and it just is not plausible, uh, you know, because it seems like she's 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 putting some kind of agenda for, uh, forward but anyway it it goes on and you know they get back to the, to to their house and then like you know she's getting all turned on by this masculine you know ex marine and 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 uh everything and anyway i'll get to that in a moment Kendall, her friend, is going to bring food over, and he'd already spoken to Jake, uh, you know, because they, they had kept in touch uh, during the past year, and, you know, so he knows the situation, and he's, he's sort of a little, find it a little weird that, uh, that, uh, um, that, you know, Susan's in this relationship, that she never contacted anybody. But he's sort of accepting it. He's asking questions. And then he meets Nate. He knows Nate. And they're pawning him off as his, as her cousin. And he seems to fall for it at the beginning. And then Nate excuses himself, says, oh, he's not feeling well. Uh, and he goes to the bathroom or the bedroom, the bedroom I think it is, yeah, uh, in this tiny little apartment. So it turns out that he actually, and then he finally does twig that it's Nate. Like, not at the first second, you know, but it takes him a little while to figure out. Right. Okay. Um, so he, he spills the beans that he knows it's Nate and all this kind of stuff. And he promises not to tell Jake about this, but he wants to be in on the investigation and so forth. So... Uh, you know, and then, you know, that's when he leaves and they're sitting there, you know, so she tells Nate to go into the shower and turn himself off, basically, or, you know, be quiet and don't do anything, um, you know, until I call your name again. Um, she'd already tried this to see if, you know, they could explain because uh, Nate uh, explained how, what happened, I'll get, sorry, I'm, I'm backtracking here, but, but Nate... Uh, explains that you know he went to get some some test tubes of some sort in a in a um, um, a cupboard, and then the next thing he remembers, he's standing there holding the weapon, dripping with blood, and Doctor Goldwyn is dead, and he has no recollection of any of that. So they're trying to figure out what happened. Uh, so they find out that when, when she tells him, you know, um, don't move, freeze, you know, uh, don't listen, don't see, you know, don't move, don't do anything. And he does. Like, he just shuts, he shuts himself down, all senses down. And then they find out that they can just move him around, like, with a little finger, that he floats, he glides across the floor. 
how this happens is not explained. You know, somehow he's like pops out wheels on the bottom of his feet or something like that, or he glides and he, he's got anti-gravity, you know, it's just, it's just a bit weird. But anyway, they find this out. So, so it, anyway, after that, they tell him to go into the shower stall and be quiet. You know, don't be bothered. And she's getting turned on by this guy. So she hops in bed with him. And, you know, he's saying that he's in love with her the next morning after they have magnificent sex and all this stuff. And it's like right away, you know, yeah, this is, this is, you know, it's just alarm bells going that it's either so bad her writing that she's creating something real here or this guy's a fake. There, 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 there's something going on. Turns out he's fake. Um, but anyway, so, so they're investigating all this stuff. And they find out that there was a burst of radiation that knocked um, um, uh, 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 Nate, you know, unconscious sort of for a while. And they moved him back. They killed the doctor. They moved him back. And they put the, uh, you know, like a big crowbar hammer in his hand. Um, and there's a there's a problem there. Because he shuts himself down and it's like, you know, he has no sensory perception. How would they be able to put it into his hand and have him hold on to it? It would fall out of his hand. Yes, he, he doesn't crumple when he's when he's doing this because he stays in the position that he was, but all senses are, are turned off. So... It would you would not be able to do that, and if it, they didn't explain how this happened, so that's to me a big flaw. So yeah, it's just there, there's so many of these things in here, but anyway, and then they find out yeah he is uh, you know uh, a fake uh, this paladin you know he's actually it's back now to the Ministry of Defense that are after her you know and. Um, you know, uh, Jake takes her for the day because she basically she has hired um, Paladin to be her bodyguard. But Jake wants her for a day and they go out to a dinner uh, with with Kendall. And as they're leaving from the dinner, Kendall gets killed, gets his brain shot out, you know, uh, and uh, and and Susan gets injured, shot in the shoulder or a ricochet. But they find out that that the bullet that killed uh kendall was from a high-powered rifle that's you know it's, it's basically ministry of defense uh and they found the bullet actually two blocks away um uh, because they didn't clean up like you know the, everything else was cleaned up but they used dummy bullets um that you know hit her uh because it, it previously the day before or whatever a couple days before in the park there were no bodies in that, so they thought it was a cleanup team. But in actual fact, they were using the dummy bullets, and you know, in a in a in a in a um, uh, um, uh, a pedestrian got got injured, but not badly. And it that turns out why they thought it might have been a ricocheted bullet. But they, you know, they had um, that was the other thing that that is a problematic with this is they've got the story, you know, people of talking. They they describe Nate and then they describe him and then they describe both. But because they're saying that they were together, they, they you know they discarded all the other stuff. But uh, you know they they were saying that they didn't shoot anybody. That he shot in a different direction. That he didn't he didn't come out to tell the police there that he shot three people. Now, why why don't they have reports that three people were shot and fell? If they've got reports of Nate and Paladin and Susan getting on a motorcycle, they surely have, you know, reports that there was three that were shot and fell. But that's not even brought up. That didn't ha that didn't exist. That those aren't reports. But okay, fine. So. Yeah, and then, then it comes to a head because they like you know he's trying to say that you know you got to find this decoupling code that they were they were talking about in the in the second book and all this kind of thing and finally it comes to a head that she she realizes because Jake ticks her off uh, twigs her off that you know there is a, a situation here and all of a sudden it comes flooding into her that he's paladin is fake and. Uh, Oh, there's another thing that that's really, really just well. There's several things that are stupid. I think 
uh, you know, they, they're going to the funeral of of um, of Doctor Goldman, and like she's thinking, oh well, hopefully the uh, you know the the Society for Humanity will have enough you know consideration to leave them alone at the at the uh, at the funeral. Really, this is an organization that in the first book that was that was training you know uh, suicide bombers you know, with the nanorobots, you know, to blow themselves up and it blew up a child and killed Remington and all this kind of stuff. And she's thinking, oh, well, maybe they'll be considerate and allow them to do a funeral without attacking them. Really? <laughs> you know, it's just a, an asinine comment. And and then at, the, at that point, Nate is there too. And then there's the uh, doctor, the other doctor that was the partner of Dr. Goldman is Dr. Peters, but his, his name, first name is Cody as well. Yeah, Cody, right? He meets Nate and he doesn't recognize Nate. He's worked with Nate for years and years. You know, that it was their sort of, you know, thing that they, they used Nate for, 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 for uh, you know, as a lab assistant. And he doesn't recognize Nate, and he never recognizes Nate. She takes him to she takes Nate to Arthur Lamming, who actually, you know, built or helped build Nate. And it takes him a long time to recognize Nate. And it's like, really? It's like, you know, this is this is ridiculous. I know people some people don't pay attention, but come on, this is just too much to take. And other things throughout the story, like, you know, she, she'll inter, interpose uh, in, in a thing and she's talking about, you know, how guilty people get off. And she mentions, you know, something she's going, oh, it says, Susan could scarcely deny it. Seventy years after O.J. Simpson was acquitted for murdering his ex-wife, she doubted anyone would still believe uh, he was innocent. And it's like... Would O.J. Simpson still be in people's minds at that point? Yeah, she she might know something, but it's a you know a clever writer will couch it in other things of saying, oh well, throughout history, people have got off, you know, that were that were guilty and 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 got off, you know, uh, off crimes. And then another, and sorry, I, I I keep going on with this, but I'm I'm quite frustrated with this because, and then she she puts in as not, um. In Susan's head, um, but she basically says that they, this paladin, you know, he sets his perfectly formed buttocks onto the couch, and that's in the narrative. And it's like, uh, it, it's these kind of things. It's like cheap. I mean, extremely cheap romance, like all this kind of stuff. So many eye rolling things of how people react, and they don't react in that way. Cheap, cheap soap opera tactics. And it ends up, you know, everything's okay. The government agency is disbanded, or at least the people in charge are disbanded and all this kind of stuff. And and, and the, the, the whole thing at the end of how, where Nate is in, in the uh, Port Authority terminal, it's just unbelievable. Like, it, I don't believe this. Like, how he happens to be at the right spot at the right time. Again, too much to, to believe. And then what they find out is that, you know, the, the uh, um, our, uh, Lawrence uh, Robertson is, is concerned, you know, that, yeah, human robots aren't, aren't uh, you know, going to be accepted. So uh, there was only three that were left, her father, and then there was NC-12, which is Nick, and then NC-8, or N8C, sorry, N12C, uh, which is uh, Nick, and N8C, which was Nate. And they've already dismantled at the end, um, you know, recycled uh, Nick. And they want to do that with Nate, too. But uh, 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 she, she, you know, it's, it's up, you know, she's, he gives her him to her and let her do everything. So she takes him out for a day. They go to Coney Island. They do some ice skating with Jake as well, because... Jake has been offered a high-ranking uh, spot with the Ministry of Defense, and that's to her like him because she was taken to, to Washington and apologized for and all this kind of stuff of what was what was happening. Because I guess the Society for Humanity has been crushed, and they're just you know just a former a ghost of the former selves, and then now the uh, the the ones that were uh, culpable in the uh, 
uh, a ministry or the defense or whatever, the, the, the government department had gone and there's new. Anyway, she gets him a good, a plush job, a nice job. Anyway, um, and then she, you know, instead of dismantling, she gets given a uh, an electronic sort of a gun that can fry the brain of of um, of uh, of uh, positronic brains, and uh, we we actually see this in, in operation in in the last story uh, in Robot Dreams, I think it is that uh, Isaac Asimov wrote uh, with Susan Calvin, the last story he wrote. Uh, we've already read that, uh, but she doesn't use it. She just takes his his body power battery out in her office and puts him in the closet, gets him to sit down cross legged, and so she's just you know uh, gonna leave him there, and you know so she has access to him. And she can turn him on anytime she wants. I don't know what the cleaners are gonna think when they start opening up the closet and clean the closet, and you gotta. A person sitting there or a robot sitting there <laughs> who knows anyway um i just thought yeah it just you know despite everything that was that was done um you know outside of the universe asimov's universe it, it is an interesting aspect of of how you know they, they get susan back in, into robotics it's an interesting way with the psychiatry and everything um, but that's another discussion. And what I'd like to do is, I don't know if anybody would be interested in this, but to have a few, uh, other, uh, booktubers or at least one other booktuber that has read this and us discuss the trilogy together. Uh, I don't know if anybody would be interested in, and, and sort of its implications for the Asimov robot stories so far, thus far that we've, that we've read. If you are interested in that, um, do leave a link at the bottom and uh, I'll see if I can arrange that somehow um, and we can do a live uh, stream uh, at some point in the next week or two and, uh, you know, uh, have a discussion and anybody else who read this to ask questions and things like that. So, and I do apologize for going on and on about this, but I think it, it, it required that and it's, yeah, it's... Um, problematic to say the least uh you know um but anyway we're finished with that and then next week uh i will i will post in the in the description of tomorrow's video uh regarding next week's readings and we're back to some asimov material uh thankfully and some other short stories for another week before we plunge into some uh, the robots, I think it's robots and aliens series, but we'll discuss that later. Uh, anyway, I hope every, everybody's fine. And I do thank everybody who is continuing on or, um, you know, or that have been waiting for, uh, you know, this to pass uh, so we can get back to, uh, Asimov stories. Thank you very much. Take care, book two.